Hey, it's Andrew from Home Theatre Engineering. I'm in Adelaide with Jamie. How are you, Jamie? Not bad. Okay, we've shot this a few times, folks, so bear with us. We're probably going to start laughing. Okay, so I've just been at the Trinov conference with Crix in Adelaide, and uh, we were fortunate enough to pick up uh, Dealer of the Year for the second time around, so we're very, very proud of that. But that's not the important thing right now. It's Jamie's room. So I arrived here last night and we had a look at the room. Uh, I guess the question for the audience is, why did you call Home Theatre Engineering? What was the reason? Uh, well, I only had this recently built uh, back in May of last year. Uh, finally finished it, well, I think roughly about late December. Uh, had it calibrated, I wasn't 100% sold on the, the sound of it, especially with the bass. Okay. Uh, it wasn't uh, the tactile uh, side of the bass, it was more boomy. And hey, I reached out to you, mm -hmm. I needed your assistance, and now you're here. Yep, not a problem. So I arrived last night, we had a listen, and um, as Jamie said, the, the bass kind of droned on a bit. It lacked some punch. And so, you know, we had a bit of time up our sleeves, so we started playing with the system last night. And I'll go through a few of the things that we found, yeah, and sure. we'll talk about that. I should go through what's in the room. We've got a Crix MX-20 wall of sound. That's correct. We've got Hyperphonics 45s around most of the bed layer and the ceiling yeah. uh, as Atmos. So this is a 9.2.6. Okay. At the back, there are two Crix Phonics. Um, and so, yeah, so we got stuck into that. What I did notice um, in the AVM70, which is the audio processor, was that the subs were aligned, one was at 95 centimetres in distance, the other was 3.65 metres, so nearly three metres of difference. That's 10 milliseconds. Um, so that's quite a bit to have a difference in two subs that are directly side by side in a baffle wall. They should be pushing together. So we sorted that out. Uh, aligned them with the uh, left speaker, and things certainly picked up last night, didn't they? Sure did. However, um, there was already a, an ARC Genesis calibration in the AVM, so this morning um, I got into that. We decided to do a factory reset, That's which correct. we did, and what we did was we had a look at all the settings for the subs and all the surrounds, reviewed that. I took a calibration. I took two profiles. There's one for the front row, one for the rear row, and then we also had a look at the way that the subs and, and the surrounds actually were, were managing the sound in the room. Now, one of the challenges in this room, mm. I think, is the ceiling. It's got a beautiful starlight ceiling, but that sits on the layer of drip rock, but the whole thing actually can move. And I deeply suspect that what's happening is a lot of the energy into this room is actually being taken up by this flexible ceiling, which is possibly acting as a bit of a, sort of like a membrane absorber. Um, so we time-aligned everything, we um, pushed up the lower frequencies because originally the subs were rolling off when we looked last night at 40 yeah, hertz, they were, right? They were they just were. disappearing. So there wasn't the energy going into the room and energy that was going into the room was being absorbed. So that was sorted out. But then I also noticed that uh, this room, and I've just got to stop there for a second. This is a beautiful room. It's one of the most beautiful rooms I've been in. I really, really love the look of this Thanks, place. Andrew. So hats off to you, mate. Thanks. It, the design is fantastic. He's got acoustic treatment that looks like marble, and you'll see some photos here. Um, it just has this really, like, neat, tidy, lined look with a sort of a classic marble look uh, around the floor and in some of the columns, and uh, it's just really nice. The The Probably the catch there is it's all been done with acoustic treatment, and the problem with that is it's taken a lot of the uh, liveness out of the room. Mm. The RT60 time would normally be around 300, 350 milliseconds, and here it's actually really low. It's just over 100 milliseconds, so it's a very low reverb time, and when I, when I talk in here, even now, it sort of feels a bit like I've got cotton wool in my ears. It, it's, it's an interesting sound, and it's sort of heading towards a sort of anechoic chamber type feel. So what we had to do is make sure that all of the surrounds, all of the speakers, in fact, were um, getting their uh, mid to highs recognised in the room, as opposed to fully absorbed. So we had to compensate for that little that a little bit, which we've done. 
Uh, and uh, then we had a listen. I took some measurements with my system um, to confirm what we're getting. And I also took some um, quick measures with uh, Arc Genesis, both with the calibration on and off and had a look at the differences there. And uh, I'll see if I can pop some of these up to see. What's the outcome? Uh, 100%. Uh, I have to admit, before and after, you, you can pick up the finest detail. It's uh, a lot crisper sound. Tactile pace is there. Um, I, I can't wait to use it. No, that's cool. I, the other thing that um, we did in the room is he's got a really beautiful rack. You can see it just over my left shoulder there, I think. Um, the rack's been really nicely built and, and kudos to the guys who put it together. Um, the issue is there's a bunch of fans in there, right? And the fans were set to go off at 30 degrees. Now, because the fans were so noisy, it was actually creating quite a, a noise floor in the room, right? And it was, it was kind of very noticeable. Yeah, So I got on the phone to uh, Michael at Cricks, who got on the phone to Arthur at Electra, and we talked about the uh, temperatures for the amps. So the decision was made to bring the, um, the, uh, the temperature that the amps came in up to about 35 degrees. That shut all the amps down, and it's consequently reduced the noise in the room dramatically. Yep. It has. Like dramatically. Why is this important? What happens is you get uh, a, a noise floor, and so everything in the movie that's below that noise floor, uh, it becomes um, indistinct. So one of the ways to improve dynamic range in your room is not only to have louder, punchier speakers, but also to have less noise in the room. And the quieter you can make the room, the better it is. And if we have a listen now, yes, there's noise in the room, but there's not a lot. It's sounding really, really good. So we've tightened up the bass, we've time aligned it, we've brought the detail out in the surrounds and the Atmos. I have increased the output on the Atmos ever so slightly by about 2 dB. Um, we do need to just adjust the left and right uh, middle Atmos, uh, just point them in at this row because they're sort of pointing towards the back at the moment. And um, yeah, so uh, overall sort of opinion of the sound now? Uh, I'm I'm sold. I'm totally sold um, with what you've done. Um, it, it it feels immersive just hearing, especially the uh, the demo disc that you got. <laughs> so, I, I can't I can't believe it. Uh, you know, it, it's it, it brings a, a whole new uh, realm of listening. Um, like I said, I just can't wait to um, play some of my movies and uh, enjoy being immersed. Yeah, so. we, we had to listen to Greatest Showman, we had to listen to Aquaman, yeah, we had to listen yeah. to John Wick 3, yeah, Parabellum. Definitely. And then for a treat, I, I said to Jamie, I said, I've got a treat for you. So I went and grabbed my uh, trusty copy of uh, Point by Yellow and we put that on because it's one really fun way to experience Atmos and I think yeah. you thoroughly enjoyed that. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I think you're going to grab the album now, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I am, <laughs> I am. That's cool. Well, look, this is the point, I think, that um, there's two things that are really important in designing or in creating a good room. One is design so that you can avoid issues at the beginning and the other one is calibration so you can extract the performance at the end. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, I'm off to Auckland tomorrow, but uh, I'll continue to do some work in this room this afternoon, but I wanted to go through it with you guys, and I really want you to have a look at these photos of the room. I, I think it's it's exceptional. I think it's beautiful, and I think it's a real uh, tribute to you and, and your vision for this room. Yeah, thank and, you. And um, it's, it's obviously topped up nicely by the Crick speakers. It's, it's, a, it's a tribute to Cricks, this room, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to be here and it's been nice to make a difference. Thanks. You're welcome. Cheers, mate. Oh, thank you. Thanks again. Hopefully when I don't have to do this anymore, it's done. <laughs> God, what's that, three takes? Yeah, about three. Three takes. Cheers, mate.